Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to create a smart comp resizer script in which we're going to be discussing and exploring two different methods that we can use to resize compositions. The first method will take the entire composition and just stretch it to fit whatever new dimensions we give it. And the second method will attempt to rescale the layers within the composition. And these two methods may produce different results depending on your case. So for example, if we have a composition open, we can set a custom resolution, something like 4K, and we can adjust the scale by the entire comp, which will take this and stretch it to our new resolution so that it fits, um, but not so that it expands and hides any of the edges. And then the second method, again, is to do it by layers. So if we uncheck to resize it by the whole comp, it's gonna attempt to resize all of the layers in this composition here, and that may cause some issues, but it's going to attempt based on this method, which can be best used sometimes for footage. And you can see now it's scaled everything up to approximately the correct size in 4K. It does need a bit of position fixing, which you can do with something like a null object. And just before we get started, I wanna remind you down below to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon to be notified of when new videos are coming out twice weekly. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this exact script in the GitHub link. And down there as well, you can also follow us on Instagram to be notified of when videos go live as well. And don't forget to join the Discord server where we now have over 80 members uh, discussing code, talking about scripting, extensions, plugins, and expressions. So let's go ahead and get started. What we're gonna do is first create this script, which requires our width and height for our new composition dimensions, and then this option, which will allow us to either, if it's deselected or unchecked, this will scale each layer individually to the new resolution, but if it's checked, it will use the entire composition as a new layer and scale that so it fits our new comp resolution. So the first thing we need to do is create a window for everything. So I'll say var window is equal to a new window. And the type of window it's gonna be is a palette window. It's gonna also be called the smart comp resizer. And we'll have undefined size as well. And because this UI is super simple and it just runs in a straight row, we're not gonna add any groups to this particular project. We're just gonna add all of our elements. So we can begin by saying our width edit text is equal to our window dot add. And actually before this, we need to make sure we uh, set the orientation of our window to row so that it goes left to right. So then we're gonna add our edit text, the undefined size and the default value will just set to 1920. And I just wanna make uh, the sizes of these the same. So what I'll say is w edit text dot characters and we wanna store roughly about five characters inside of it. And then I'll go ahead and copy and paste this and change the W to H for height, which will be this guy. And we'll change the value to 1080. And then we need this whole comp checkbox. So we can call this whatever we want, like uh, maybe our method check. And we'll set this equal to our window.add a checkbox. And the checkbox is gonna have undefined size and the text is gonna say, whole comp. Then if you want, you can set the default value of this checkbox by saying method check dot value. And if you set it to false, it will be unchecked. And if you set it to true, which we are going to, it's going to be set to checked. And then lastly, we need our apply button to apply all of these settings. And this is going to be equal to our window. We're going to add a button, undefined size, and the text inside the button will say apply. Now we'll grab our window and center it and our window again and show it. And if we run inside of AE, we should have the exact same script now up and running. Now, obviously we need to break it down a little more and bring in these variables to a function in which we're going to look at whether this is checked or unchecked. And depending on that value, run one of two different methods of resizing layers or the composition. So we're gonna uh, grab our apply button. When we click on it, that's what's gonna initiate everything. So we're gonna say apply button.onclick is equal to a function. And inside of this uh, anonymous function, we're going to first make sure that we have a composition selected. That should be the one thing that needs to be done here because we're just looking to resize compositions. We don't need to check if there's selected layers or anything. We just need to make sure that whatever is open and active is a composition. So the two checks we're gonna check. First, if app.project, if the active item in our project is equal to null, so nothing's active, that's a problem. We wanna make sure they have a composition. Or 
if our app.project dot active item is an instance of a comp item and I'm going to enclose this whole instance of thing in parentheses and I'm going to add an exclamation mark to the beginning to reverse the logic of what's inside. So this is going to say if there's no active item, which means it returns a null instead of an actual comp or an item, or if the uh, active item is valid, but it's not an instance of a comp item, then that's a problem. We want to tell the user, please select a comp first. And then we'll say return false, which will quit out of all this code and just make them go back to the UI basically. So in the original example, I didn't do this check, but it is something good to have and explain just over and over as it's very repetitive and used in almost every project. And now we can run a function called smart comp resize, which we're going to define now below. Say smart comp resize. And we're kind of just gonna forget that we, we can pass these values of all of our uh, UI elements down to the function. Because they're global, we can access them anywhere. So we're just gonna save space and not pass any arguments. As well, we could say comp is equal to the active item now, but we've made that assumption already. So what I can say is comp is equal to app.project.active item. Because if they've gotten this far in the code, uh, they actually can't get further than this unless it is a composition. So we can make the assumption that the active item is a comp once we get into this function. And this is the comp we're going to be resizing. Now what I'm going to check is the value of our apply button. If our apply button dot value is equal to true, that is one method. And the other method is if it's false, which is the else case. So if it's true, if our check here is true, that's the whole comp method which is basically rescale the comp in a new comp. And otherwise, it's basically going to be the, the non-whole comp method where, where we scale each layer to the new comp resolution. So based on what our apply button value is, we're gonna run one of these two methods. And in the original example, I passed the resize bool or basically the value of our checkbox as an argument and then used a switch statement, but you can use basically whatever check method you want. So if the method is gonna be the whole comp method, the first thing we need to do actually is surround everything in a begin and end undo group. So I'll say app.begin undo group. And we're just gonna call this the smart comp resizing. And then after all of it, the code at the end of our smart comp resize, we'll say app dot end undo group. And you could actually put this maybe where we call the function as well. That way we can just focus on the function code itself. So if the apply button is true, when we click the apply button, we need to apply the whole comp method. The whole comp method starts with us creating a new composition to place it in. So I'm just gonna call a variable called new comp and set this equal to our app.project.items and we're gonna add a comp. Now looking inside the scripting guide for the method called add comp, we first need to give it a name. The name I'm gonna give it is our original comp and I'm just gonna add resized after the name. And then we need the width. So I'm just gonna grab the width edit text here and we need to grab the text from within it, which gives us a string. And to convert this string to an actual number, say it was 1920 by 1080, we need to say parse int or if it's a very specific number, you can parse the float if it's got a lot of decimals and you need that precision. But in our case, we just need integers. And then for the height, I'm gonna do the same thing and parse the height edit text.text. .text. Then our next argument is the pixel aspect ratio, which we'll just put one. The duration, we'll use our original comp.duration. And then for the frame rate, we need to take the reciprocal of the frame duration of the comp. So for example, what it's gonna give you if you type in comp.frame duration is one divided by the frame rate. So we need to reverse this process and say one divided by this, which will give us the frame rate we need. So in order to get the frame rate, again, we just need to say math.floor, which means we're going to basically round whatever number we get. You can see this has a ton of decimals and then a three, we wanna just round this to 30. So we'll say math.floor, one divided by our comp.frame duration. 
So now we have a new composition with our custom inputted uh, resolution here. So you could put in 4K and it's gonna create that size of a composition. Now what we need to do is add our original comp inside of this brand new composition. So I'll create a variable called original comp layer, which is gonna be our original composition as a layer inside of our new composition. So we'll say our new comp dot layers, and we're gonna add an item from our project panel over here. And the item we're gonna add is our comp. And now I'm gonna go ahead and paste the next code, which will calculate the proper scale to set our uh, layer to, to make sure that it fits inside of our comp. So after it gets that information, it's then going to use this algorithm based on our new composition size and scale, and the size and scale of um, our layer that it's analyzing, and create a new scale variable for us to set our original comp layer to. And this new scale, no matter what, if you have a smaller composition or a larger composition, it's gonna scale it appropriately. The same operation inside of After Effects is if you go to Transform, and then you have the options Fit to Comp, Fit to Comp Width, or Fit to Comp Heights. If you fit to Comp, it's going to squeeze it on both axes, however it will fit to your Comp resolution. However, uh, the other two methods are much more accurate for things like slideshows and actually fitting the entire image in. So if you say Fit to the Height, you can see there's gonna be some black spots on the edge because it doesn't want it to bleed anything. So what this algorithm will do is basically make the decision for you if you need to do fit to comp width or fit to comp height, and this new scale value will correctly guess and apply this value. So that's basically going to be method one. All it does is creates a new composition based on our custom dimensions, it adds our original composition to it, and then it uses this algorithm to scale our composition appropriately to the bounds of our new composition resolution. Now, for the second method, again to reiterate, we're going to be doing this layer by layer. And we're actually gonna be using the same algorithm, but applying it to layers. So, else, if we don't have the whole comp button checked and it's unchecked, we wanna rescale each layer individually for our second method. And in this case, we're not gonna create a new composition based on the dimensions. What we're gonna do is just use the original composition. So with that being said, we're gonna start with our comp, which is our active item and we're going to set the width by hand. And what we're gonna set it to is just what we set this to, which is our parse integer, uh, the width edit text dot text. And then if I duplicate this, I can change the height and change this to height edit text. So now we've changed the resolution of our original active composition. Now we're gonna to wanna to loop through all of the layers within that composition, which is quite easy. We'll start with a variable called i at one, and for i is less than or equal to, our comp.num layers, the number of layers in our composition, increment i by one. Now we do want one more check. Um, if we're applying this new scale value, we don't wanna do it if they have keyframes applied. If they have keyframes to the scale applied, uh, we can't really set the value in a traditional sense. Uh, if there's keyframes applied, we can't say set value at a static value. So basically inside of each layer, we're gonna check if the scale property has keys. And the way to check that is say comp.layer i, the current layer we're looking at, and the property, Adobe Transform Group, dot property Adobe Scale, using the mash name so it works on any computer and language. And I'm gonna check dot is time varying. And this basically will check and return true or false if there are keyframes applied. So if that's the case, if there are keyframes applied, we don't wanna do this. So what I'm gonna do is inverse the logic by applying an exclamation mark to the beginning. And this now says, if there are no keyframes, then we want to do something. So if there are no keyframes set to this layer, we're going to go ahead and use our algorithm here again. So I'll copy and paste these, and I'm gonna change the OG comp layer name to comp.layer_i, and just go through and change all these values here. And the last thing I might wanna do is to stick with using the match name. I need to add Adobe Transform Group and Adobe Scale to these properties here. And now that should run through each time we have a layer without keyframes on the scale property and scale them up in the same manner we had previously. Instead of doing a whole composition though, we're gonna do it layer by layer. And the last thing I forgot to do is if we create a new composition with method one where we create a whole new comp, in the end we should open that composition up. So I'll take the new comp and say open in viewer. 
So now if I go ahead and run my script, let's go ahead and start here and we're gonna make this the whole comp method and we're gonna make a smaller comp. Let's say 960 by 540 and hit apply. Now you can see we have a smaller comp and one mistake I made is I'm using the apply button value which isn't valid. I need to be checking the method check dot value and I think that should make it work now. So if I go ahead and run it and let's select another small resolution using the whole comp method and hit apply. And as you can see, it's created a nice small composition for us and is using our newly scaled layers and resolution. And then of course you can go to another composition or whatever, use the other method which attempts to do it via the layers and set a custom resolution and find out what that result gives you as well. But that's gonna do it for this week's After Effects scripting tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, hit subscribe down below and hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out Monday and Thursday on the channel. Down in the description, you can get the code for this project on the GitHub link. You can also follow us on Instagram there to be notified of when videos go live. Of course, be sure to check out the Discord, join in the scripting, extensions, plugins, and expressions discussion, and have general discussion, get your questions answered, and help answer other questions. And if you'd like to help out the channel and donate in crypto, you can donate in Bitcoin, Ethereum, or basic attention token in the description down below. Thanks again for watching everyone, and we'll see you next time.